So hello everyone, it's Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch. Thank you for joining me again. Today we're doing a watercolour sketch, a loose watercolour sketch, um, using just a quick pencil drawing and some fun and vibrant colours to capture this sort of grungy or grotty um, street scene, I guess, alley. Uh, the photo itself is from Porto, near some of the port lodges there. Um, and I guess with that, let's get sketching. So we're going to start off, like I said, with a um, a quick pencil sketch, and all we're doing is grabbing those big shapes. Um, so you can see we kind of got three elements to our our buildings. We've got the wall on the left, we've got the buildings at the end of the street, and the buildings on the right of the street. So I sort of grabbed those three areas. They've got they're really just sort of rectangles with triangles on top, aren't they? So just pop those in. I decided to edit out one of the windows on the right hand side. Um, but I do want a couple of these interesting details, like it's my friend walking on the left here. I'm going to take the photo, and then these um, two bits of uh, street furniture, the the two, the sign and the little lights. I think were quite fun. So just pop those outlines in, and then we are good to get sketching. You can see a really rough outline of the trees as well. Now the the sky is very light, so I've just popped in a little bit of tone, nice and loosely before moving on to the wall. And these walls, they're fascinating, aren't they? Filled with all sorts of cone, cones, colours, <laughs> colours and tones, that was. So how can we get that feeling? Well, by doing a little bit of wet on wet work within that wall, adding tones, dropping in colours. So I'm working here with some uh, deep quinacridone gold, a little bit of moon glow, and a little bit of uh, carmine and a little bit of quinacridone and sienna, so lots of colours, but just dropping them in, moving them around, and then also going back in with a clean brush and washing things away a bit. There's a little building in the distance behind it, so I popped that in with a little bit of moon glow as well, but I wanted to just wash out some of that colour, so you can see in the sort of chimney-like area, I've just washed out a bit of colour, that pushes it back, it makes it feel like it's more in the distance. Then moving on to the next area of of sort of colour, of just getting those blocks of colour in. And what I want to do is pick out those roofs. There's some nice reds and then also some dark tones in there. And having done that, we can go upwards and start working on the trees or the greenery. So there's again two layers of greenery. We've got some sort of light greenery in the front, which is, is definitely green, but I've, I've started with some quinacridone gold here. And then we've got some darker greenery, which we'll get to later. Having got that greenery, I'm going to then just work back in some of these roofs again and start getting some more texture up close. Now the roof colour I'm using is a bit of quinacridone sienna, a little bit of um, carmine, and then also some moon glow in there as well for some of those deeper tones. The wall on the right is a, a very similar idea to the wall on the left. There's a little bit less of a glow to it. So a little bit less quinacridone, a little bit more of those murky colours. And you can see we can we can approach watercolours just by separating things out into separate layers, separate planes, and working on each layer or each plane one at a time. As long as we're using similar colours and we're able to be a bit fluid in how we work, that's a really logical and convenient way to work which means we don't have to push too hard at the beginning to try and sort of suddenly have something finished we can just accept stage by stage we're going to build this up around the the streets and in the background again it's similar colors you can see i'm doing a bit of splashing and that's really to try and get some extra texture the the road is not a flat wash it's also not got many lines on it, has got lots of bubbles, sort of those tarmac -y bubbles in it. So these little splashes are just trying to emulate that. Now while while they're wet, they do tend to settle and move. So that's why I keep adding them again and again. Now having blocked out colour everywhere, we've got those lightest tones in. 
it's time to start adding in our darker tones. So the first wash, you're painting the light, the lightest areas you want to show through. And now we can move in with some darker washes. So what I'm using here is a mixture of uh, quinacridone sienna and indigo, and little bits of moon glow as well, because that's a lovely dark color we can use. And I've changed to, uh, it's a very soft brush, but it's a quite a fine brush here. And just going around pulling out where are those darkest areas, like at the bottom of the walls, very dark, uh, underneath the curb, very dark in these doorways, these windows, and in that background, there's lots of those darkest tones. Time to move, as I said, onto some of these darker greens as well. well. It's not even really green, is it? If we look at the reference, it's much more well, essentially dark, almost black. There's a hint of green in it. So going in with some sort of rough brush strokes and then what I'm doing is bringing that dark down and then negatively painting those lighter bushes. So by bringing in dark shapes, we can cut into those quinacridone golds and we can pull out shapes which suggest the lighter bushes. So the the aim of the dark isn't just to, to describe itself, it's also to describe the light by surrounding it. For example, if we just draw a whole page of yellow, we could draw a yellow circle by putting a lot of dark around that page until we just had a circle of yellow. Same principle, but when we're painting with the light doing negative painting, we're trying to create shapes of light by surrounding them with dark. Within that quinacridone gold, I'm now popping on some more green. This is a mixture of fallow and um, fallow green uh, with a little bit of, um, sorry, it's gone from my head, a little bit of quinacridone little bit of quinacridone sienna as well. And we're still moving around here, pulling out darker darks, playing with some of those dark washes. So you can see I popped in a quite firm line on the top of the wall on the left, but then you can soften it, just come in with a little bit of water, let it run down a bit. We can also start pulling out, now that the trees are dry, we can start pulling out little suggestions of branches and twigs and things in there just adds to the idea of texture of what's going on. And still just really slowly building up. This is the kind of stage where you get, you need to be careful not to overdo things. So you need to be just keeping in mind, um, just not to over over add colour, over add tone. So stop before you think you've done too much and just have a little look. And it's also where I've left these spaces for these little details in a couple of places. And this is where I'm gonna start adding those in. So got a little chap on the left, I'm just turning him to a bit of a, a carrot figure. Cause that's all this scene needs. We don't need a, a lot of details. The, the um, lights and the sign on the right, lovely little pops of colour nice opportunity to also add some warm reds in there um, and in a moment I'll go back in and add some of those darkest tones you can see another opportunity well as well with those dark tones to add in a little bit more structure into some of those trees and bushes and to go back again and just reaffirm some of the edges of those shapes so the bottom of all these walls really does have a line of dark where there's some shadow so we can go back in and we can really add those This is really sort of getting to those finishing touches stages, just looking around the image thinking where perhaps is a little empty or not interesting enough or not quite pushing us in the right direction. And if you find somewhere you can just add little touches, decide a little bit of extra texture, maybe a, an extra suggestion of detail. Um, I decided my, my carrot man wasn't quite the right shape. And then so I just add a little bit. And I think you can see after that, the carrot man is much better. Then I decided to come in with a little, um, just a, a yellow wax crayon, just to add a, a little sense of some reflections um, and to bring out a little light in our man as well. And and that's done, just a few little touches of that kind of mixed media effect. Um, 
and that's kind of all it takes with with watercolors just blocking in those colors before gradually layering up tone and then adding in those darkest tones to really suggest the final details but we don't need to do more than suggest the final details and a huge amount of the interest in this image for me at least comes from that fascinating wash on the left that wall on the left looks really I, I really like how it's come out that's just through using a bit of wet on wet in a controlled way to get lovely textures and also through those looming dark trees coming out the back again when we've added dark tones use a sort of rough wash and been a bit rough with our brushes before pulling out some color and then being able to add on top of that a few little details with a fine brush anyway thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this and um, please do like and subscribe if so i love reading comments so um, let me know in the comments what you think of this or what you might have done differently or what what you do enjoy about it thanks again